Welcome back to another Health Hackers review video. This episode is all about the Lima laser, described by its makers as a world first. It's claimed to be up to 100 times more effective than at-home LED devices. Now, I like a good at-home gadget. You've probably guessed that already though. So when I heard about the Lima laser, I got in touch and asked if I could review it on Health Hackers. I didn't see a response land in my inbox, but then my husband bought it for me for Christmas. I think he was feeling sorry for me after my skin drama during Thanksgiving. <gasps> if you follow at Health Hackers on Instagram, you may remember my stories about that. Anyway, here's some footage filmed by my husband of my Lima laser starter kit unboxing after it arrived all the way from the UK. This is so classy, this packaging. An authenticity card, which actually feels like genuine metal. And in here, there is a book, hardback, no less. So these must be the products that you use with the laser. Oh, this is the laser. Oh my goodness, that is so sleek and compact. We've got active mist here. What's in here? So that must be, oh, a little sleeve, a sleeve for the laser. And then charging cable. Um, oh, something else. What's that? That's probably battery, battery charger. So here's what happened next. I began using the laser. I took some photos the day after I started using it. Forgive the silly expressions, but I wanted to document the state of my fine lines, blemishes, and a little spot scar on my cheek as they were at the start of my Lima journey. A couple of months went by and I got back in touch with Lima to request an interview for this Health Hackers video. The answer was yes, and I got to have a chat with the company's founder, Lucy Goff. So when I was researching this laser, uh, it seemed to me that the skin benefits were discovered almost by accident. Can you tell us a, a bit about that story? Yeah, so uh, low-level laser therapy was discovered um, in the 1960s, and scientists were very excited when they discovered all the benefits from low-level laser therapy for wound healing and um, uh, dealing with uh, issues that are going on beneath the surface of the skin, so rebuilding cartilage, healing tendons. This technology was not able to be brought into the home. You know, lasers are a potentially dangerous um, device, and you can't just take a high-powered laser into the home. So it never caught on in the skin regeneration market because it wasn't safe to be used in the home. But laser, low-level laser therapy has been used since the 1960s in hospitals to treat um, issues that are going on beneath the surface of the skin. So like I said, to rebuild cartilage, heal tendons, post-operative surgery, et cetera. Um, and that's actually incidentally why scientists looked for an alternative light source that was suitable for the skin to use in the home. And that's why the LED market boomed. But um, fundamentally, LED light and laser light are two completely different forms of light. You know, an LED is a scattered light. It's, you, know, you get these dramatic plumes that um, come out from, from an LED machine. It, in effect, bounces off the surface of the skin. It's not able to penetrate through the skin with enough physiological power to transform it at anything other than surface level. But laser light is a gold standard of light. And, you know, it's, it's a monochromatic light. It's a light that runs in a straight line and is able to penetrate through all the layers of the skin past the fat and muscle tissue and have a physiological effect. So would you say that this laser doesn't fall into the category of at-home LED devices? No, no, no. This, late, this is a not the same category of LED. It's like comparing... Um, a, a beef to a chicken. It, 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 they're two completely different light sources and they work off two very different premises. LED um, creates thermal damage to the skin. It heats the skin up 
in the process of renewal, it creates more collagen, but LED light can only uh, have an effect superficially. Uh, there is some evidence to suggest that some of the light will penetrate through the skin, but the problem is it's lost its physiological power. So when you say on the website that it's 100 times stronger than at-home LED devices, the Lima laser is 100 times stronger than the kind of red light therapy lights that I've used yeah. on my skin so before. Lots of companies say, you know, oh, it's um, near infrared light. But when you actually look at the light source, it's near infrared LED light. It's near infrared laser light is very different to near infrared LED light. The way that this light works is as it penetrates through the um, th through the layers of the skin and into the fat and muscle tissue beneath, it has a microscopic heat effect. And uh, the cells are heated up to a very, very tiny controlled amount, something like a hundred thousandth of a degree. It's a very, very, very tiny amount, but very precise amount. And that's the exact amount that triggers a genetic switch inside your cells. And the cells that are associated with aging are switched off and the cells that are associated with renewal are switched on. I know you've said it's a, a cold laser, but sometimes when I use it for a while, it starts to warm up and my skin goes, it, my skin starts to look a little bit flushed. Would you say that's a, a good sign? Yes, yeah, so that's your, that's your circulation increasing. So it's called a cold laser because it's not, um, it, you know, you, you, have you ever had in clinic laser treatment? I mean, it, it, it's, you feel like your skin's burning. It's a very, very buzzy, hot sensation. Um, but this is, this is classed as a cold laser. So although you will um, feel some slight warmth, um, it's, it's not destroying your skin. That you're, you're, What you're experiencing is, is an increase in circulation. And that's why some people who um, use a lima laser for stretch marks, um, they notice that the stretch marks go deeper in color to start off with. And that's because there's an increased circulation to the area uh, that helps to renew the skin from the base level up. Oh, that might be what's happening with some red spots I get on my chin sometimes. When I laser them, I feel like they've become a darker red, but that would make sense. Yeah, it's just increased circulation. So what you're doing, and especially with the two products that you use alongside the Lima laser, the Active Mist and the, and, and the Priming Serum, um, they've, got, um, they've got very high amounts of highly bioavailable oxygen in them. And that also increases the circulation in the area. So my understanding is the Lima laser can be used for acne, rosacea, wrinkles, sagging, cellulite, scars, thread veins, bruises, hyperpigmentation, and eye lifting. Of all of those, is there one you think the laser particularly excels at improving? Um, well, I mean, it genuinely works across all of those conditions. So, um, you know, it's not that it, it's not effective in any of those conditions. Um, I think the, the most transformative element to the Lima laser is um, its ability to uh, get rid of scars. You know, from a transformative um, perspective, I think that, um, you know, getting rid of a scar is, is, is a lot more powerful than maybe reducing the size of a wrinkle. The before and after pictures on your website are so impressive. If someone is using the laser and they don't see results like that, what could be going wrong? There's nothing going wrong. Um, I think that, you know, everybody start, first of all, it's tackling a whole host of, 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 of skin issues uh, and everybody's got different skin and every journey is gonna take a different amount of time. You know, we, we put 12 weeks in there because um, it's, you know, it, 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 it seems to be that for, uh, the majority of cases that that seems to be the, the the sweet spot but it really depends on what you're treating and it depends on how your skin is reacting as to how long it's going to take so if you don't see the results in 12 weeks first of all i have to say you will see results in 12 weeks it's not that you won't see any results in in in, in 12 weeks uh, but if you haven't seen the results that you want to get you just keep going until you get the results you want to get. 
And then once you've achieved the results you want to get, then you go into maintenance mode where you just use the laser a couple of times a week to maintain those results. Can it ever be used too much? Is there a point of diminishing returns? No, um, this is, um, I hate the word medical grade because I think it's just overused and everybody seems to say medical grade when, and then and you find out like the, the plug is medical grade that, that the device uses. But this is um, a device that's been used in hospitals since the 1960s. It's been extensively tested. And actually in the process of testing this device extensively, um, it was strapped onto uh, somebody's leg and, you know, laid there for a very, very, very extensive period. Um, and in the process of uh, having the laser attached to the leg for so long, it actually got rid of the thread veins. And that's how we know it can get rid of thread veins. So um, it doesn't damage the skin at all. Uh, you can leave it on there for 24 hours. It's not going to be, it poses no danger at all. Um, the battery would have run out. Um, so you can't actually do that. <laughs> uh, but no, it, it's totally, it's totally safe. The optimum time to, the optimum daily use is um, to use it for 15 minutes twice daily. 15 minutes per area? Yes. Because I found that on my face, I could, I could easily do an hour and 45 minutes. Now I watch a film and just do it because yeah. it's, Quite relaxing and I find the way that um, there's a nice groove on it, it it just gives you a bit of lymphatic drainage at the same time I do the kids homework and sit there and use it watch a, watch a film watch Netflix and I use it um, so no, you, you don't be worried that you that, that you're overusing it you can't overuse it there is a point where it's, you're not going to end up with the skin of a five-year-old if you use it for 24 7 um, but, you know, it, it, it works fundamentally by switching on more and more of the cells that had naturally died off as part of the aging process. So it empowers your skin to behave as it, as it would in your early 20s instead of, um, like me, I'm nearly 50. So it, it, I, it doesn't, um, my skin doesn't behave like a 50 year old. Has anyone ever complained that the exposure to the blue light in the evenings has negatively impacted their circadian rhythm or sleep cycle? So there's actually a lot of education to, uh, that goes with blue light because blue light at one end of the spectrum is not good for your, for your eyes and can uh, play havoc with your sleep cycles. But we use a blue light at uh, 470, uh, 470 nanometers. And that's the small end of the spectrum that's closest to the turquoise end of the blue. And that's actually a good blue light for you. So it actually improves sleep. It's been shown to um, improve sleep cycles. It's used for um, people who suffer from uh, seasonal affective disorder. Um, and we use the blue light in the, in, 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 in the Lima laser it is LED, so we're not asking that light to penetrate through the um, to penetrate all the way through the skin. We're just asking it to um, help eliminate surface bacteria. So we're only asking it to stay on the surface of the skin. But no, that is a large portion of blue light that is um, that that's um, not beneficial for for us. But as you move towards the turquoise end of the spectrum, there's a small spectrum of blue light that's actually very beneficial. And that's uh, what the lean laser falls into. Beneficial even at night time? Yes, yeah. Um, let's talk quickly about the products that come in the Lima Laser Starter Kit. So I have quite sensitive skin and I try to be very cautious about new products. Your skin looks amazing, by the way. I, have I mean, there's it's a lot of makeup as well today. Um, so I introduced the mist and serum slowly and I've mostly been using the laser with my other skin products. Does that mean I've ruined everything and won't see great results? It doesn't mean that you've ruined everything. It just means that you won't get the maximized results that you would if you use the active mist and the priming serum. They're not conductor products. So it's not, it's not, they're not products that can be replaced by anything else. Um, after cleansing, you should use the uh, active mist and the, the mist is, um, it's got the highest amount of oxygen scientifically possible in water. 
So it's 36% um, oxygen. And it's presented in an O4 form, which is the form that your skin can actually absorb. So your skin can't absorb oxygen from uh, normal water because it's presented in a gas form. So you start off with the mist that's got a very, very, very high level of uh, oxygen in it. Um, you then move on to the priming serum. And uh, again, there are three actives in there that help to prime your skin for the laser light. So uh, there's more active stabilized oxygen that's delivered to the bottom layers of the skin. There's also low molecular weight beta glucans. And what they do is they send a message to the brain to say that the skin's been attacked even though it hasn't, they're derived from um, uh, baker's yeast. Um, so they send a message to the brain to say the skin's been attacked. So you send kind of more forces to the site. And what that does is it, 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 um, it kind of hoovers up the debris in the skin. And then there's also um, orca stem technology, which is um, a stem cell technology derived from Japanese orchids. And that encourages the fibroblasts to communicate better. Um, so if you consider the laser as like the petrol in a car, so, you know, even if you put the best petrol in a car, um, you still need the oil and water to fully maintain it. And the, the two actives in particular, the active stabilized oxygen and the low molecular weight beta glucans are rather like the oil and the water. So as your skin ages, it loses oxygen, which is one of the reasons why it's got no energy, your cells have not got the energy uh, inside them to carry on. So they effectively kill themselves off. So by flooding the skin with oxygen, you're actually compensating for um, uh, uh, an element of, of that, that's been lost in the natural aging process that the laser light um, really feeds off. Um, to fuel your skin so no you know you, you you're not gonna um, it's not going to not work if you don't use the products but you definitely won't get the full effect if you don't use the products you know it might just take longer to get those results is there any cream or skin product that blocks or reduces the efficacy of the laser no um i mean uh, there are some there are some cosmetics that um, that that, that um, block the UV rays, so like the sunscreen, but um, they don't block the IR end of the light spectrum. So they don't block the uh, infrared part of the um, of, of the light spectrums. That 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 will get through anything. So no, there's no um, that there are no products that will block the laser light. Uh, if you are on certain medication, that can make you more sensitive to light. Um, one of the other reasons I didn't always use the Lima topicals was because I pH tested them with some little home strips. The mist came out as a pH 7 and the serum as a 6. This was when I was writing an article about skincare and pH levels, so I was suddenly mindful of everything I was using, testing everything yes. in my bathroom. Um, and I wanted to aim for pHs nearer to the skin's natural level of about 5. Do those uh, pH values for the Lima products sound correct to you, or did I get it wrong? In reality, um, the serum should have a pH of... Of, of, of about six and the mist should have a pH of, um, of no more than five. pH was not a barometer that we used when we created the uh, mist and the serum. Some people um, go very much down the pH route but we went down uh, the actives route and we wanted to get as many actives as we could I mean, bearing in mind that, you know, we would never launch it, we would never put a product out that was that, that was higher than like seven and a half or something like that. Um, but, you know, your your skin, the skin on your, the pH of the skin on your body uh, ranges from three to eight, you know, depending on where in the body, you know, you're, 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 you're testing. So for your customers in the US, like me, would we need to have bottles of the serum and mist shipped every month from the UK? Yeah, so um, Lima is uh, predominantly a subscription business. It's free next day shipping. So it, it just kind of comes automatically. And it's, um, 
$149 a month for the, um, for the mist and the serum. And have you faced criticism over the $2,500 price tag? And if yes, how do you tend to respond to that? I think you've really got to understand the technology that's gone in the Lima laser. You know, it's not a cheap technology. It's not like, you know, LED is a cheap technology. It's, it's uh, you know, it, it's not a, an, an expensive technology um, to, to produce. And, you know, by the same token with our supplements, you know, our supplements are $199 a month. Uh, but ultimately, the supplement industry, over 90% of the supplement industry doesn't work. It's, it's been proven not to work. So, you know, it's a shame that we are a supplement because we're compared to the rest of the market. So it's like, you know, with, with our supplement, we only use peer reviewed forms of each of the ingredients, which are a, a lot more expensive than organic. And by the same token, you know, there's very little legislation in the, um, in the cosmetic market too. You know, it's heavily focused on will this is this device safe? Not is this device likely to have um, a, a, an actual benefit for you? So this technology, you know, the, this machine is the same machine that you'll get in the hospital, and we've managed to get it for two and a half thousand dollars. It's a machine that will last you ten years, and you can use it for the whole of your family. Um, you know, when the kids graze themselves. Uh, you know, uh, if, uh, if, if you want to um, help with a scar, if you want to um, reduce pigmentation, you know, as your daughter, as, as kids grow up, they might get acne scarring, you know, you can use it on them. It's really a lifetime, um, it's a lifetime piece of equipment. And, um, you know, if you go to um, a clinic and, and have a series of late in clinic lasers you can pay two thousand dollars for six sessions and you know you have to repeat that every year so lima th this th this this device is really an investment so it's an investment that you that, that you make it's something that you can keep on you all the time you can use every day and you can really either prevent the aging process um, or, well, you can, sorry, you can s dramatically slow down the aging process. And yes, it is a different price point to the rest of the skin renewal industry. It's a totally different piece of technology. I suppose it's tricky for people to know whether they're getting the real deal and, you know, to spend that kind of money. Is there anywhere that you could direct people to? Do you have um, peer-reviewed studies or a section on your website where people can look at the science behind the laser? Yeah, so um, we've tried to distill the science on our website because it's quite, um, it's quite daunting. And, and I think that the supplement industry and, and the, the wellness industry as a whole um, tries to bombard you with science, half of which is just a game to think that you are actually buying into something that works. But I'm glad that you actually raised um, the fact that, um, you know, you're looking for peer reviewed literature, because ultimately that's the only literature to trust. You know, anyone can do a private clinical trial and come up with anything that they want. It doesn't mean to say it's actually going to be. It doesn't mean to say it's true. Um, but there's a very well respected um, craniofacial and, and plastic surgeon called Dr. Graham Glass. Uh, he was at Great Ormond Street. Um, for many years, um, helping to rebuild ch uh, child's faces, you know, the, from cleft lip palates to, 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 to accidents. And um, he was very interested in the uh, Lima laser technology and he's actually written uh, three academic papers on it that are, um, one has been published in Aesthetic Medical Journal, sorry, Aesthetic Surgery Journal, and the other two to be published later on this year. So it has got peer reviewed literature um, to back it up, not just for the laser, but for the system as a whole. And can people access that anywhere at the moment? Um, yes, the, the first study um, it has been made public. Uh, the second two studies are, um, are in press at the moment. So they'll be published at some point this year. But this technology, low-level laser technology, has got thousands of um, 
peer reviewed papers to, to back it up. So, you know, fundamentally outside of the Lima laser, if you look at low level laser therapy, which is what it is, that's where the real peer reviewed literature is. Nobody else has managed to um, have an at home clinic grade laser, 500 milliwatt laser combining the near infrared light and the blue light. So that is a world first. I mean, actually just getting it into this machine took years. It, it, was, um, it was a very, very um, challenging process. I reached my three month mark with the laser and I took some more photos to compare. You are looking at December 2020 on the left and March 2021 on the right. Bear in mind, I didn't use a super duper camera that picks up the finest of detail, but I've noticed my chin no longer has the cluster of red blemishes in the crease. However, I know the second picture does look like my lower face has larger spots than when I started using the laser in December. I would say though, skin is complex and those newer spots could have been down to hormones. Maybe they would have been worse if I hadn't used the laser. We'll never know. Looking at smile lines around my eyes, I'm struggling to tell if they have improved or if it's just the lighting, and I can't be sure if the little spot scar on my cheek has changed either. What do you think of these results? Can you see something I can't? I would love to hear your observations in the comments. So in summary, here are my likes and dislikes about the Lima Laser Starter Kit. We'll begin with the dislikes. Blue light nights. I was under the impression that blue light exposure at night can negatively affect your sleep. I've reviewed blue blocker glasses on health hackers. But Lucy said in our interview, the laser uses a good blue light at the turquoise end of the spectrum that's beneficial even at nighttime. I got in touch with science writer Carlos Teo at Self Hacked. He's got a PhD in molecular biology and has written about the health effects of blue light in the past. Carlos said he found studies using the same wavelength that showed melatonin suppression and the resulting delay in the circadian rhythm. There are other factors that could affect this, such as light intensity or the duration of exposure. I told Lucy about Carlos's finding in an email and she said, the blue light in the Lima laser will not cause fluctuation in melatonin levels if used at night, unlike blue light from screens. All I know is that I personally now prefer to use the laser in the daytime rather than nighttime. And that's my next dislike. The time commitment in the morning can be a challenge, mainly because I want to use it for longer than 15 minutes to get greater coverage. Sometimes that means I get arm ache too, but it's a handheld device. What was I expecting? Finally, the serum and mist. I just prefer to use my own creams or oils for the reasons you heard me outline in the interview with Lucy. I also found that once the serum had dried on my skin, the laser didn't glide so well. And even the Lima instructions say you can apply a moisturizer over the serum to help the laser glide more easily. Plus the fact, if I subscribe to regular deliveries of the serum and mist, it would cost me $149 a month. Now for my likes. The before and after photos on the Lima website are impressive. Those alone make me feel very encouraged about the laser's capabilities. There's a lot you can read about low level laser therapy for skin issues online. Research may be ongoing, but much of what I've read appears promising. It does seem though that more studies are needed to be able to know which wavelengths might be best for particular uses. And finally, I like the way it feels. There's something relaxing about gliding it over my face and it's said to be safe enough to use around the eyes so I don't have to wear goggles. It's also just nice to believe what Lucy said, that it empowers your skin to behave as it would in your early 20s. I'd love that. This last point is neither a like or a dislike. It's about the price. Yes, two and a half thousand dollars is expensive, but if the laser does last you 10 years, and if you do get skin improvements, like the photos on the website, even if it takes longer than three months, then maybe that is a worthwhile investment. Ping me an email in 10 years and I'll let you know if I still feel the same way. That's it. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.